Look at the magic. <laughs> hey, it worked. Yeah, it worked. How you feel, Frank? I'm pretty good, man. Good. You know, uh, it's just a, it's craziness, man. I just got some news this morning that one of my friends has COVID, and uh, you know, it hasn't been been really a reality uh, to most of us here, but it does hit home uh, when someone someone you know actually got it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I've known a few people, thankfully, nobody that's had it, like, so bad that, you know, hospitalized and oxygen and all that kind of stuff. They seem to be, if nothing else, they seem to be better at treating it. The death rate has gone down, so. Yeah, yeah, I've known people that all it did was give them a headache, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of weird how it affects everybody differently. Yep, that's well, for how sure. How you doing, man? Are you I'm good. Home? Yeah. Your I'm... studio? Yeah, yeah. It's the Chop Shop Studios. All right. Yeah. Yeah, always always good. All right. So, uh, so I, mean, I guess we're live, huh? Are we live right now? I, I, yeah. I'm new to this stuff. <laughs> yep. The second I hit the button to allow you in, it's, it's, it's live. So is there people watching us then right now? Yeah. Yes, sir. All are. right. Yep. On their own phones in their own homes or wherever they happen to be, so. Oh, I see Fitz uh, 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 joined. Um, I'm seeing some names pop up here. Yep, and they might ask you a question or two or say hello or, or whatever. So, Oh, there's someone that says hell yeah. What's up, everybody? All right, I've been waiting all day to say this. It's cheesy as hell. Can I do it? Uh-oh, breaking up. Coming at you live. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michelle Kaufman. <laughs> uh, talking with Frank Hannon, uh, by the way, this is the uh, Virtual Rock Room 101 WRIF brought to you by Sailor Jerry Rum and the Diamond Vault of Troy. Obviously, Black East Frank Hannon. Uh, why don't we start with Tesla? I mean, obviously, there's very little that can be done. So you guys are supposed to be out on the road with uh, Alice Cooper. Uh, that obviously didn't happen. So any Tesla plans at the moment? Man, I just got off the phone yesterday with my tour manager and everything is postponed at least until March. We were thinking hopefully maybe we can play at a casino or something, but right now there's nothing on the books. Nope. Um, Wife hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> Wife Gina, Frank. Hi, Hi, Gina. Nice to meet you. Thanks for participating in this thing. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know, that being said, that's why we're doing this uh, little charity event for uh, our road crew. You know, everyone's out of work. Um, we're, you know, we're scraping by. I mean, the little savings account that I have is pretty much dwindling down and down. You know, we're just living off that. And uh, but I feel really bad for the road crews out there because they work the hardest and they're suffering the most, really. Yeah, so what we're talking about is the Six String Salute, which uh, debuts tomorrow night. It'll be on the Live Nation YouTube channel for the premiere at 8 o'clock. Uh, Frank, of course, you were kind enough to join us. You even brought in one of your Red Voodoo guys on uh, on your performance. Uh, yes, I did. Uh, Dino uh, is the singer of Red Voodoo, and uh, he sang a verse of a Tesla song with me that will be on the performance and I also have another young artist that I'm producing named JT Lux, who is playing uh, acoustic guitar with me. And we do a little piece of love song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited about it. I get to hear something cool. But more than that, it, it's a wide variety of rock, which is cool, but it's also a wide variety of performance styles. We have everything from, you know, acoustic on your couch with Hailstorm to you know, giant performances that took place at festivals. And uh, it, it's interesting because it shouldn't work and it works really, really well. And everything kind of comes in and out. It really is pretty cool. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how they put it together. Um, my particular performance was recorded in my attic studio uh, where I, I uh, do a lot of my recording of, of demos and my projects. Uh, we recorded the Red Voodoo Rise Up uh, song there by the way the song rise up we also did a covid relief benefit there uh with direct relief um dot org that benefited the nurses on the front lines and people like that that song uh, did pretty well uh 
uh, Red Voodoo song, Rise Up. And so we recorded that in my studio, and that's where we recorded our performance for tomorrow night as well. Very cool. And Red, Red, Red Voodoo, for people who don't know, a younger band that you produce, where did you find them? How did you hook up with them? Uh, they're a local band here in the Sacramento area. Um, they're young guys. The singer's 17 years old. Um, with extreme amount of talent, and they're really influenced by the good old fashioned '80s rock. And friends of mine had been telling me about them. And uh, before the COVID uh, lockdown happened, I was playing a gig, and the singer Dino came and jammed with me. And uh, I recognized immediately his talent. And uh, so right now, I'm teaching them how to write songs and how to take their songs that they have and make them better which is something that Ronnie Montrose as a producer did for Tesla back in the early days when I was 17 years old. So it's kind of fun now that I'm in my fifties, I'm kind of doing like what Montrose did with us and giving back to these young kids that have talent. You know, it's a lot of fun. I, I would uh, love to revisit those days, man. Uh, uh, a, a super young, late teenage Frank Hannon and all you Tesla kids <laughs> not really knowing you know, up from down and dealing with a legend like Ronnie, man. Man, I tell you what, when I look back on it, I was so young and I had no idea what we were doing and how lucky we were to be getting involved in with these people like Ronnie Montrose and and uh, ultimately getting signed to Geffen Records, who had, you know, uh, Sammy Hagar and then, you know, just that era you know, it was a magical time, and I was so young, didn't realize it. All I knew is I wanted to write songs and play guitar, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a magical time. But this new generation of rock and rollers that's out now, like Red Voodoo and Greta Van Fleet and Dirty Honey and, and uh, you know, bands that are coming out, they, they tap into that feeling of, of that music. And so uh, it's really cool. It's exciting to see, man, when this COVID thing... Uh, is over next year and these young bands can get out and tour. It's going to be really exciting. Yeah. I've, I've been calling that whole genre, the new dirty blues, because it sounds very new and very modern, but they do take their influences from the late sixties, early seventies. And you know, you hear a band like, um, like Bible, just so dirty. Like they, they really get it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. They're using a lot of grit and rock and roll sounds, you know, uh, Gibson guitars is really supportive of the new generation of musicians and you know they have kramer and the bands that you're talking about like rival sons or royal blood i mean definitely influenced by the 70s greta van fleet but the the real exciting time for me in the music was 80s 80s music was so freaking fun and exciting and that's what i'm really excited about with red voodoo is their music is influenced a lot by the van halen and the dokken and the Def leopard you know and a little bit of Tesla in there. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, you hey, the 80s were fun, man. Yeah. You mentioned Gibson and their support. Um, you've got a Love Dove guitar available. I was very uh, honored to be uh, to recognize by Gibson's new uh, uh, owner. Uh, uh, the, the, the new management team at Gibson uh, really paid me a, a, a huge honorable thing and and did a tribute to my uh love song intro music that i did and uh they made a special guitar a very limited run uh the love dove acoustic yeah yeah, yeah. i was real i'm still in disbelief that i have a, a signature model gibson guitar it really is surprising to me because that little piece of music it was just something that came out of my heart you know 30 years ago and it's um, it seemed to have touched a lot of folks. So that that's the most rewarding thing. Hey, so I'm seeing, I'm seeing people down here uh, typing stuff. That's really cool. Hello, everybody. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't know what your name is. M-K-N-T-I Matowski. <laughs> Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, try to describe, if you can, you know, when you think of an iconic song, a lot of times they have this big opening riff and so you're on the page you have this big opening riff but with, with love song it's literally one note like you're on an acoustic guitar you hit that open all the crap exactly what's going on with one note yeah 
Yeah, it's uh, that is that's a funny observation. It's true. Um, um, there's nothing like that when when the audience recognizes. Hey, what's up, Shell? Uh, when the audience recognizes the song that you uh, created, um, and uh, there's a couple of moments like that with Tesla. Like what you give is the same thing. As soon as I hit that first note on the guitar. Hey, speaking of which, I should go get my guitar and uh, see if I can play it while we're on here. How about that? Yeah. Hold on. Let me go grab one. All right. The professional in me wants to sneak in the sponsors one more time. Can I sneak in the sponsors? Sailor Jerry Rum, Diamond Troy. Okay, is this still working? Yep. Hey, I want to let everybody know if they're watching, or uh, I see a lot of people on here. Um, this Saturday, there's still time. If you want to go to Tesla the Band uh, website, you can uh, join on a, a phone call that I'm doing. There's a, there's a new service that we have where you get on a playlist and you call in, and then we have a one on one conversation. You know, for like five or ten minutes, and we—it's like it's called a virtual meet and greet thing, and that's happening um, Saturday at three o'clock Pacific time. But you can still get tickets for that now, and uh, you know, I'll, I'm going to try to make it interesting for people and you know, play guitar and stuff. Hey, if I turn this sideways, does it work? Mm, I don't know. Maybe if I turn me sideways, let's see. How about this, yeah. <laughs> Does that work? It works. I can hear you. You can hear the guitars working? Yep. Well. All right. <laughs> so here, I'll play a little uh, little uh, taste of what's happening tonight. Tonight, or actually tomorrow night, it'll be better because Dino's going to be singing it. Yeah. And uh, you're surrounded by so many great musicians, too. I mean, from young gun guitarists like Andy Wood and Sammy Bowler to, you know, some of the really old guard guys, you know, Rick Emmett and Tommy Shaw from Sticks. I'm sure you grew up listening to those cats. Oh, heck yeah. Rick Emmett's going to be on there. See, I didn't know that. I'm definitely going to be tuning in because he's one of my heroes. Uh, I knew that Sticks was on it. Uh, Nick Perry and the Underground Thieves. Yeah. Uh, Nick Nick was in a band called what is it Silver Tide or Tide. yeah yeah and he's got a new band out so I want to send a shout out to him. Uh, the Underground Thieves they just did some shows with Blackberry Smoke. Uh, really good friends of mine. Steve Vai is going to be on the Six String Salute. Um, yeah. I don't know if Joe Bonamas is on there. I'm not sure. Um, but I saw a list, man. It's amazing. It's going to be a great show, and it benefits our road crew, which the reason why I played What You Give is our road crew has always given so much. I mean, these guys and gals are the first ones to walk into the venue, set up all the PA and the lights. They're the first ones in and the first ones out. And then we drive 300 miles and get to the next city and they do it all over again. I mean, they work their butts off. I used to go in and watch Def Leppard's crew set up the PA at nine in the morning. These guys are way up in the ceiling hanging chains, you know, and uh, it's amazing how hard they work. Yeah, here, I'll flip back around. 
All right. Uh, so, again, that's uh, Live Nation YouTube channel tomorrow night, Six String Salute. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, Six String Salute 2020. That'll give you all the information. Crew Nation is the organization we're helping out uh, as we raise money. By the way, the live stream is totally free, so just tune in. Uh, we're selling merchandise, limited edition stuff in order to try and raise money, and there's an auction as well. Uh, yeah, there's going to be an auctioned uh, Epiphone Les Paul guitar. Uh, they're shipping it to me. I'm supposed to receive it in the morning, and I'm going to autograph it. And they're going to they're going to auction that guitar off, uh, an autographed uh, Epiphone Les Paul guitar. All right, before we wrap up, let's uh, grab a couple of questions. People who are out there watching, they've been in some stuff for us. So, hey, I see somebody here talking about DLS pedals. Um, yeah, that's a. a a uh, roto sim pedal that i use uh live to do the uh leslie guitar sound and uh, i love dls pedals uh, dave's great uh let's see uh what how are you gonna take the questions man i was just gonna see what popped up on the screen so there's probably a bunch of people since we just talked about it typing right now so we'll hey see. let me uh, type on here and see if it works Hey, it works. <laughs> All right. Did that work? Did you do you see that? Yep, I sure did. Yeah, he says he's got that and the echo tap. Yeah, the echo tap's a nice pedal too. Yep. Right. What's oh, up, wow. y'all? Hey brother, I see that. Anybody got any questions? Uh, the way it is in love song, yep. I, uh, now the song, the way it is, just so people know that, um, here, let me get out of this thing here. What's going on. I, uh, was influenced a lot by Peter Frampton and the first lick on that comes from a song that, uh, Peter Frampton did in humble pie. There's a song called strange days and, uh, it's like a jam and Peter Frampton does this little thing. Uh, uh, it goes like this. So I, I borrowed a little bit of it and I went like this. Something like that. Right. Totally. Peter Frampton was a big influence on me. And also there's a little piece of, uh, do you feel like we do? I paid tribute to Peter Frampton on, on that song, the way it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Say what? And you guys eventually covered that song one day, too. Do you feel like we do? We did. We used to cover Do You Feel Like We Do. Um, back in the old days, uh, I would sing it live. Um, but we did it on Real to Real, and Jeff sang it on the album. And uh, uh, we used to do it like if we were having a rough night where Jeff might be losing his voice, then that would be the song that I would sing. And... and uh, and uh, it's the oh, there's a question here, Frank. Is there any way that you might team up with Tommy again? Well, that's a pretty good question. <laughs> I have to tell you, I love Tommy Skeel. I just did a, a, a an online master class where I broke down the rock and roll fantasy camp, and I broke down modern day cowboy and how Tommy and myself collaborated and worked on that music together. When we were kids, uh, Tommy Skeel and myself, I was 16 and he was about 19 or 20. And I was such a, I used to really look up to him. I was a huge fan of his style and still am a great fan of his guitar playing. And we were like best buds. And then, you know, we would collaborate and write songs like Modern Day Cowboy or any of those Tesla songs, we'd write them together. But as time went on, man, you know, the egos and the problems, myself included, I mean, you know, throughout the years, the competition, and it really drove a wedge between us. And, uh, you know, the drugs and alcohol just really destroyed our relationship. I'm just going to be honest, you know. We weren't supposed to talk about this stuff, but now I figure it's been long enough. Um, I don't see that Tesla will ever go back because we love Dave Rood and Dave has really been a great uh, addition to the band and it would be disrespectful to him to go backwards to a, a toxic 
thing, a, a relationship that really got very toxic. Um, yes. Unfortunately, I don't think that Tesla will work with Tommy again, ever. But I will say that myself, personally, I have always loved Tommy, and I just wish him the best. I'm so glad that he's still alive, and I know he's got a new band out that uh, put a song out called The Myth I'm Living." It was kick-ass. It had Tommy's guitar. Every time I hear – look, I'm getting goosebumps right now. <laughs> Every time I hear Tommy Skeel play, it brings a smile to my face because he's freaking awesome. As a musician, I have nothing but love and respect for the guy. But um, I don't think Tesla will ever work with him again. But I, I do wish him the best. I, I got <laughs> might be, I, I don't know, if you make a list, a top 10 list of uh, my favorite guitar riffs of the 80s, that, that intro to Modern Day Cowboys there. Thanks. Oh, I think I see Monique. Hi, Monique. Um, yeah. And so that... That is an example of two young guys, okay? I was 15, 16, and Tommy was 19, 20. He would come over to my house because I had a record, I had a four track. And we would record ideas on the four track. And he had an idea that used that kind of a hammer on riff, but I had an idea to play it with a note F in it, which required your fingers to stretch a little farther. Okay. And so Tommy said, well, I can't play that, so you play it. So he basically gave me the riff, and I changed it. So, you know, that's just how it works when you got two guys who are friends before the ego problems kick in. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we're, uh, we're probably good time-wise. You want to you wanna answer a couple more? You want to take well, off? I mean, the schedule is. I'm having a good time, man. I don't know why I'm in a talkative mood. I've had two cups of coffee. <laughs> Let's see who else is there. I see Michelle. Hi, Michelle. How you doing? Uh, the Heavy Metal Hippie Brew. I'm seeing a question about that. Um, we're making a new batch for it. Uh, it. It's a seasonal beer, so we had to take a break from it. But it's coming out now. And uh, I do have a meeting with the guy for national dis distribution. So, uh uh, we are going to uh, try to get that out to you. Heavy metal hippie beer. Uh, yeah, the Far Out podcast. Yeah, I, I took a break from that right now. Um, but we're going to do I'm going to do one with Aaron Lee. I think Aaron Lee is a bass player that worked for me. He plays in Y&T. And he's got a new song out called Insanity. That's really cool. You guys should check out Aaron Lee's new song. Hello? Yep, I, I'm here. I was just trying to read. Uh, where do you think a guitar should go nowadays to put together a rock band? Well, uh, a 19-year-old guitarist. Um, if you don't have a band now, I think you should find some local guys wherever you live first and try to write some songs and create your own uh YouTube channel and, and get your songs out there locally first before you move anywhere. Uh, there's a lot of competition in Nashville and LA, and I wouldn't recommend going there yet until you are armed with a lot of songs. Yeah, makes perfect. Yeah. Do I have a, a whiskey named after me? No, I don't have a whiskey. <laughs> um, someone says Touch of Magic. Yeah, that's one of my uh, solo songs. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So Monique uh, is Brian's wife, and she's on here. Hi, Monique. And she's from Detroit. Oh, okay. We've got a great history there in Detroit, uh, especially with the riff. Yeah, yeah. Well, good time for that. We're <laughs> difficulties in Detroit as well, but uh, um, yeah. These are trying times right now, man. It's really, I've never seen more craziness in the world than what's happening right now. Yeah, it's just been a really incredibly strange year. You know, yeah. Uh, uh, which I guess we can wrap up by going back to the to the six string salute, talking about the road crew. Uh, that again is tomorrow night. Uh, Live Nation YouTube channel, eight p.m. is is the uh, the concert. It's going to run over two hours. A lot of great players playing. Um, but when you think of the road crew, I saw a meme that was just incredibly true. It was they were basically the first group of people to be unemployed because of COVID, and they'll be the last group of people to go back. 
That's rough. Yeah. Yeah, it's very rough. Um, you know, they consider entertainment and music to be non-essential, but it really is very essential to the sanity. I mean, there, there's more deaths and more more uh, craziness from people losing their minds, uh, you know, depression and everything else from not being able to function and get have music and entertainment. So hopefully they figure that out and um, take the chains off and let us get out there. All right. Last question, because I see you crawling through. You played with George Lynch at NAMM. Somebody wants to know what that was like. Oh, wow. Well, George is one of my guitar heroes. Uh, the Dawkins Tooth and Nail album is one of my favorite albums. Uh, but I will say George is a character. He's very uh, intensely uh, intense. And I've never really had the chance to get to know George very well. But I did back him up at a Ronnie Montrose thing, and I played rhythm, and he played lead the whole time. <laughs> I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> I backed him up. And he's such a great rhythm player. <laughs> Here's a funny George story. We were, we were doing a jam session one time. You know, we're playing, you know, uh, Bad Company and ACDC. And George comes in and says, hey, let's play Mahavishna Orchestra music. <laughs> we're like what <laughs> yeah he's a trip alright Frankie I'm going to let you go man we'll see you <laughs> okay I want to remind everybody go to Tesla the band and uh, sign up for my meet and greet on Saturday I got two hours I'm going to be taking phone calls from everybody there you go teslatheband.com bye everybody thanks a lot right. man thank you brother bye <laughs>